What is up? And welcome to the show, Quest for Dough. I'm your host, Cody Pritchett. I'm here with Tiffany Pritchett. Um, this is going to be a really exciting show. So a little bit about Tiffany Pritchett. She is the owner of Prichet Bridal and Salon Prichet. Um, it is a designer, beautiful wedding dress store that she sells gowns at. And then she added a full service salon to the side. So it's a one-stop shop for the look of your bridal wedding day. Um, Tiff has been killing it, and it's been one of the fastest growing salons in the nation. And there's so many more things I could say, but the best thing of it all is she also happens to be my wife. Hey, yes, Tiff. I am. <laughs> hey, Tiff. <laughs> I, I hope I didn't butcher that intro, but I feel like it went good. No, yeah, you did great. Okay, good. Okay, so Tiff, I'm going to... Uh, for those of you listening, I'm going to interview Tiff kind of as I'm going to interview anyone else on this podcast. Like Just I'm not your wife? Like you're not my wife. I love it. Um, I still probably have a lot of comments to say, but yeah, I want people to kind of hear your story and your background of everything that you've went through to get to the point you're at with starting Preche. Because um, I mean, you are a woman in business with your own business. Appreciate Brattle employs 25 women Yep. outside of Tiff um, and her mom, Stephanie Vincent, who runs it with her. Mm -hmm. um, and it's been growing year over year. It's been three years now that they've been in business. And so it's been awesome. And so tell me, just give a rundown of what you do right now, what it is you do. And then we're going to start from the beginning. Okay. So first I want to explain the word appreciate. Um, our last name is obviously Pritchett. So the way we came up with the name Prichet Bridal is it's our last name. It's spelled just <laughs> like our last name. And with an accent. Yeah, with an accent over the E, which actually I don't think is grammatically correct. No. But that's okay. <laughs> um but it's kind of like Target, Target, Pritchett, Prichet. So that's just for all the, you listeners out there to kind of remember how to pronounce the name of our bridal store. But yeah, we're just a, we're a bridal store. We sell wedding dresses. Um, that's probably like the main part of what we do. It takes up about a little over half of our, probably 60% 60 of our store is wedding dresses and try on stations and that kind of stuff. And then about, 25% is the salon. And then we also do alterations in the back. So it's kind of like three businesses in one. Um, but it's awesome because we're basically a one-stop shop for brides whole wedding day looks. So they come, they find their wedding dress with us. They get their alterations done by us. And then they come to us for their bridles and their wedding day to get their hair and makeup done. So each of our stylists specialize in bridal hair and makeup and um, we also do cuts and colors as well. So a lot of our stylists are busy in the mornings doing bridal hair and makeup. And then throughout the day, they're all they all have like balayage and color clients. Um, and it's awesome because it keeps us all busy and we all get to do that hair and makeup that we've always loved. But we also get to have our color clients as well. So it's great. Um, That's awesome. Would you say for your stylists that work in the salon? What percentage is brides and what percentage is just their normal hair clients? I get this question a lot. I actually should probably look it up because literally people ask me that all the time. Right. I would say probably like a fourth of their clients are brides. Okay. And the rest are and regular colors because right. they if they have four clients a day probably one is a bride and the other three are color clients does right. that make sense and is it often that the brides they get do they come back to them for their hair after yeah so the awesome thing about our store is that if you buy your dress dress you get 10 percent off for life in our salon and that's including your wedding hair and makeup but it also includes cuts and colors for the rest of your life um and that's something that I was so excited about when we added in the salon because let's go back a little bit really fast. So we actually bought an existing bridal store when okay. we first bought Prouché. Before you get to this, well, I want to go back even further. Okay. So we'll get into all the details of the store and everything you were just talking about. In a second. Okay. In a second. But let's, let's go back to the beginning. So what you've created is beautiful and amazing and you and your mom do such a good job at running it. 
Um, but tell me. Yeah. What, wh- huge shout out to Steph really fast. Yes. She is my business partner and the most amazing human being ever. Literally, if she didn't do what she does for us, appreciate would not exist. No. Um, but tell me, so like, when was the first time you realized you wanted to own a bridal shop or a salon? Um, I'm like your typical girl. When I was little, I always dreamed about my wedding. Like I had a notebook with, sorry guys, (laughs) I'm nine months pregnant right now and get really bad heartburn. And sometimes the heartburn causes me to like not be able to breathe for a second. So I apologize. Um, but So when I was little, I had a notebook that had like all my, it was like a Pinterest board for weddings, but Pinterest didn't exist yet. So I've always loved weddings. um, And I feel like the easiest way into weddings was hair and makeup, uh, which is something that I also was like super interested in. And I always thought that my way into the wedding industry would be my hair and makeup talent. So my whole life, I always did all my friends makeup for all of our dance competitions, all the moms, even when I was like 10 would ask me to put the eyelashes on like my whole team okay. because I was really good at that. Right. Um, it's just something that I've always like found an interest in. Um, and then I also loved weddings on the side, but I would say I didn't really like put the two together until I was probably like in eighth grade when I realized how like intermingled weddings and hair and makeup right. could be i didn't realize well first off eighth grade that's young that's yeah. so young babe i think i was 14 when i first presented the idea of the, of a wedding dress shop with a salon inside to my dad wow um i didn't realize it was weddings first that you wanted to get involved in which led you to hair and makeup yeah i've always loved weddings wow who knew not i <laughs> that's cool um so you're 14 I don't know if it led me to get into hair and makeup I would say that they were two things that I loved separately right does that make sense yeah and then in eighth grade you were like what if I combine those two things and someday I want to own a wedding dress shop with the salon inside yeah exactly and first so- I decided like what if one day I was like an exclusive wedding hair and makeup artist right and did all the brides and then i was like what if i created a storefront where people can find their wedding dress and get their hair and makeup done and then i'll for sure have all the brides come to me for their hair and makeup right that's awesome and then yeah so so you go through high school with this dream and then so what happens next what's like the next step you took towards getting to your dream or getting to this business um So, I mean, the next step I took was my senior year of high school. I went to a makeup artist like certification class. Um, The first semester of my senior year, every day after school, I would go for like six hours after school to this makeup class. Okay. Um, And that's when I started really getting brides coming to me uh, for hair and makeup. And then I decided after that to go to hair school. Um. I actually remember where I was driving with my dad when I told him about my whole idea. We were driving to the airport on like I-80 or something. And he was like, if you do that one day, let me invest in you. (laughs) I was like, okay. And I remember thinking like, wow, I can't believe he just said that. Like that means he like actually thinks that that's probably a good idea. So I feel like that comment is what kept it in my mind forever. So then fast forward senior year, I did that makeup course. And then during that makeup course, um, some of the teachers of the makeup course were also hair school instructors at the school that I took the class at. And they were like, you should come do hair school. And to be honest, I hadn't really thought about doing hair. I didn't think I wanted to do colors. I thought I just wanted to do makeup and styling hair, which you don't have to go to hair school for. So that kind of planted the idea in my mind to like actually go to hair school. And I looked a little bit more into it and I ended up signing up that January to go to school that next fall um, after I graduated. So I graduated from high school. I went to LA with my mom for a few weeks in the summer, got licensed in airbrush makeup and it was about a month and then when I got home from LA I pretty much started hair school like right off the bat so I was pretty into my makeup career by the time I started hair school I would say um 
so then I did hair school and I did hair school as fast as I possibly could. I started, well, not as fast as I possibly could, but I started hair school in August and I graduated the next August, which is pretty fast to get it done in like one solid year. Okay. Um, and then I got married. I wonder who that lucky fella is. (laughs) Me. That's a whole other story of us getting married, but. Yes, it is. For this part of the podcast, we'll just kind of skim through it. Jump over that. So. We got married. (laughs) (laughs) So we got married that October. um, And I started working at an awesome salon called Amara. Um, And when I was at Amara, I just, I, I did cuts and colors. Um, I was assisting an awesome stylist that I learned so much from, but I didn't really feel fulfilled. And I had the idea in the back of my mind still of owning a bridal shop with a salon inside, but it honestly, it didn't seem like a very, what's the word? Like it didn't seem doable. Yeah. Realistic. It didn't seem like a realistic dream, like in any way. So I happened to be married to like the world's biggest dreamer in the whole world, you. And uh, he was always coming up with like different business ideas. You were always coming up with different yeah. business when, ideas. When we got married, I probably had two or three a week. Yeah. For a good solid year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was the mean wife that was always shutting down all the ideas because, I mean, you can't say yes to literally everything. Right. And... Uh, one day he said to me, well, what, what are your ideas? Like, okay, if you don't like any of my ideas, then what are your ideas? What are we going to do? Yeah, babe, what are your ideas? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've got one, one idea. And it was, I don't feel like it was a, I always knew that's what you wanted to do. Yeah. But we didn't really like think about it that much. Right. Cause it I was, think to both of us, it didn't seem like a realistic right. idea. I remember thinking like, that's cool. Once we yeah, like make a lot of money and we're in our thirties. We'll use our money to start this or even like forties, like after our kids are graduated. Right. Then it was like, kind of like a thought in the future. Someday we'll do that. Yeah. Like that would be really cool. Right. Um, so when he asked me like, what are my ideas? I was like, well, that's like pretty much all I got because I truly believe that to start a business or do anything, you have to be truly passionate about it, which is part of the reason why I would always say no to Cody's ideas because they were like a sock company. I'm like, do you actually like socks? No, but it seems like a good thing to sell. It's true. I was, I was so passionate about starting a business, but not about the business idea. Exactly. So I think it took us a while to find something that we both were great. Amazon Prime just made a delivery. What'd you buy this time? I can't remember. Probably, Probably something. something for the baby. <laughs> Probably. We get, we get two packages a day. Honestly, lately we have. Like between Christmas and having a baby, we literally get two packages a day. Right. Anyways, besides the point. So, um, yeah. oh, I just think it's so important to be passionate about a business idea before you can start a business. And that is a piece of advice that I will give to all entrepreneurs out there. If you're not truly passionate about something, doodle. Sorry. (laughs) Doodle. Everyone's like, what the? Doodle is very protective of us, and he did not like that the doorbell just rang. Um, I just think that having a business is hard enough as it is that if you're not truly passionate about that business, then there's just no way that you can succeed because there's so many different hurdles you have to jump through. Right as a business owner, that if you're not passionate about what you're doing, there's just no way you'll be able to. I agree. I mean, it's been three years and something on the first episode of this podcast that I talked with Mike, he said, you know, he's found that people, when you do something because you're passionate about it, that's when you're really successful. Totally. Is you, well, because you, you care about your passion and that's what you want to do. And then the money and other things that you might need will follow. Right. But Finding something you're passionate about is truly what gets you on the direction or where you feel like you should be. Totally. I love that. Um, okay. So you feel passionate about it. So we felt passionate about it and Cody felt really good about it too, because honestly, Cody's not like your typical guy. All the stylists (laughs) at our salon always joke, like Cody always notices when you get your hair done or Cody notices things that like a lot of husbands don't notice. He's always loved hair and makeup, not in like a weird way, but he's appreciated 
hair and makeup. Right. I like, I, I like say. nice hair. I like when you look good. Yeah, totally. I like when- he loves that I was a hairstylist. Like when we first met, he thought that that was really cool, that that was something that I was interested in. So I feel like as passionate as I was about it, you were equally as passionate about right. doing that as well. Well, I was just pumped that it's not a business I'm going to try to start. It's a business that we're going to try to start. Together. Right. Totally. Because I've always dreamt, I always dreamt of starting a business. Like what is my business going to be? But when you came, we're like, I want to start a business too. And I was like, it's Great. a business, the business. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, Let's- totally. So um, basically what happened is I was, I quit my job at Amara just to kind of figure out what my why was in life. Like I wasn't as passionate about doing hair anymore as I had been when I first started hair school. And I felt like I just needed to take a break and maybe see if like there was a different path I wanted to go down or whatever. Um, and pretty quickly right after I quit Amara is when we started talking about opening Prisha A. And, um, we told my parents about it because obviously I remembered what my dad had said. So we went to my parents and said, Hey, we want to open a bridal store. What do you think? My parents are both real estate agents. So they said, let's do it. Let's start looking for a building. We started looking for investors. Um, and it kind of just like literally once we started talking about it, we started going right. Like we hit the ground running. I think the biggest thing, well, when anyone wants to start a business, that's the hardest part is figuring out how to get going. Mm-hmm. I was like, that first part was hard because we were like, how are we going to afford a building or get inventory? We were thinking like maybe getting like, a home equity loan. Yeah. Like getting another mortgage or like figuring out what to do. Yeah. And we realized we needed an investor. Mm-hmm. We needed to find someone. Totally. And so. And we also realized really quickly how much work this was going to take and that. I, w- I had gone to hair school, which is great. No dissing on hair school, but I had no education on how to run a business. Right. I would say I'm a street smart person and I can catch on quickly, but I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, Cody was in school at the time and we just realized that we needed help. Like we couldn't do it financially on our own. We were 20 and 21 at the time. Right. And we couldn't do it business wise on our own either. So that's when we asked my parents if they wanted to be our partners. Right. So Tiff's parents were were helping us, and then we needed the investor. So mm-hmm. explain the, I want you to explain the investor part of it. Yeah. So we came up with, like, a list of investors of who we could go to, who we could present this plan to. Um, and one of the first people we went to was Cody's parents, actually. Um, they invest in all kinds of stuff. They That's what, that's what they do. Uh, Maybe I'll do a podcast with Big Kev one day. You should. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Kevin Kevin is a freaking stud. You should do a podcast with Kevin. He's got a lot of business ventures to talk about. Yeah, and just so much. He just knows so much. Right. So um, the first people we went to were Kevin and Diana because we wanted their input um, and just to hear what they thought about it. And pretty much... We started talking about what we wanted to do, and Kevin basically said, where do I sign up? Right. Like, I believe in this. I believe in you. I believe in your mom. Like, if you and your mom are doing this, you like it's going to go far. Right. Basically, where do I sign up? And we didn't talk to any other investors after that. No. Um, Yeah, I mean, my dad, he he came from the car business, so he sells cars, and he knows how how to sell something like inventory inventory like a tangible item yeah and so i think when you told him like it's wedding dresses we can sell these he was like i know this industry i know how to sell things yeah and i would i mean with your personality he's like what's the difference between a car and a wedding dress (laughs) right like i can help you right so he probably thought he was gonna be one of the ones selling yeah he did (laughs) (laughs) um So, yeah, so we didn't go to another investor after that. And it actually was so great. We have a great relationship with both of our parents. And now we we're all partners in this together. And it's It's been been such a huge blessing. Um, We run the investment side of it just like we would with any other investor, I would say. Right. So, I mean, we just and we're paying him back like an investor and all that stuff. 
but we also get the knowledge of Kevin to help us. Right. So it's been really great. Um, so once we got the investor, so go from there. So we finally, it was, it was a scary moment trying to find an investor. Yes, it was. It was, it was terrifying. Going, going to my parents' house. Because we, we spent a lot of time with just my parents trying to figure out how we could do this on our own without getting an investor first. Right. We looked at like small houses that we could buy as like, I mean, almost like as a rental property that we could just go in on with my parents and then make it a bridal store. But then you have to have like the commercial licenses from the city to do business out of a house. And it was nice. just a lot. And we knew we needed an actual investor. commercial building. Right. And that's when we decided we need an investor. So anyways, like we said, we went to Kevin and Diana. They said, where do we sign up? And we kind of just started hunting. Um, my parents, my dad's a commercial real estate agent, so he started showing us different buildings. We actually found one in the river bottoms that we really liked, and we put an offer down on it, and we were about to sign on it. And I was doing hair out of my house one day um, to one of my sweet friends, and I kind of told her she worked at Avenia Bridal, which was a different bridal store. Was at the a time. different bridal store at the time. Um, I had gotten my wedding dress there, and I was just kind of asking her different questions about it because I told her that we were going to open a bridal store. And she was like, Nancy, the owner of Avenue Bridal, has mentioned to all of us employees that she's wanting to sell. You should just go in and talk to Nancy. And I knew Nancy from when I had bought my wedding dress. Right. And then I was like, oh, that's a good idea. And she left, my client left. And Cody had been sitting on the couch, which was just outside my salon. And he was like, did she say that Avenue Bridal is selling? And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, I think that's a great idea. Like, let's go talk to her. Let's go see, like, what the potential of that could be. So me and my mom actually went in initially just to ask her because she hadn't formally said she was selling. So right. we were kind of nervous to say, like, hey. It wasn't, wasn't like a biz business listed for sale. Exactly. Not at all. So you just walked into the store. So me and my mom just walked in. Because we were the ones that knew her from when I had bought my wedding dress there and just said, hey, we heard that you're wanting to sell. Is that true? And she just said like, oh my gosh, you're an answer to my prayers. Like, yeah, I actually, I've really been wanting to sell. So we said, okay. Uh, we called Cody and Kevin. They both came down to the store and we basically started negotiating a deal with Nancy, like right off the bat. That was in October of 2016. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So... That was October of 2016, um, and we just started negotiating a deal, and by December, we had closed on the, December well, 28th. She was like, she wouldn't come to a deal. Yeah, that's true. And we were going to, we we had already paid, what's the thing you pay on a commercial estate property? The escrow money? Or the money you put down? Yeah. To buy. So my, my parents, the investors, were going to buy the building, and we were going to rent it out for them. Mm -hmm. That was the, in the River Bottoms in Orem, or Provo. Um, yeah, that the original building, not right. the building that Avenue was in. And we were like, literally like, I swear it was like three days, like a week away from like them signing on that and owning the building. Yeah, and we had already put some money down, right. like $1,000, but like still. 5, yeah, my parents, but it doesn't matter. Um, we were so close to doing that, and then because Nancy wasn't like willing to work with us or mm -hmm. she was, but she was just like, I want like this. She wanted to, but it was just so much to do. Yeah. But then my dad came and was like, I think no matter whether we lose that money or whatever, we need to put, we need to take over an existing battle shop. Yeah. Like that's the smartest thing to do. They already have a good rep like reputation. Um, they already have employees, right. systems in place. They have the designers. Yeah, that's the other thing. There's contracts with designers. Um, and I actually knew about that. And I don't know how I knew that. I think it's just because I was so interested in the wedding industry. But I knew that there was contracts with designers and that not every bridal store can sell whatever designer you want because you, each bridal store has a contract with a designer that no one within 50 miles up to like 150 miles, no store within that range of you can also sell the same wedding dresses. And the designers I wanted to carry at Preche were the were some of the designers that Nancy had contracts with. And the store we were looking at buying 
was only three miles away from Avenida, so there was no way we'd be able to get those contracts. And once we realized that, we were like, let's buy Avenida pretty much solely for the contracts because we, Avenida, we had to gut, we changed everything about it. I mean, really, right. we didn't keep anything Avenida had other than their contracts with their designers and the awesome employees that she had. Right. So, yeah, so that's what we did is we, we said, okay, so we didn't get the building. We took over Avenida, which is, just, we're just renting a place in like a little strip mall. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so go on. So we gutted it. So yeah, so that, so December 28th of 2016 was the day that we closed, but we officially took over for like tax purposes and stuff like that on January 1st of 2017. And that was an exciting day. So yeah, it was. basically from the 28th on when we closed on the deal, we closed the bridal shop for a week and gutted the whole store, remodeled everything, um, and just made it preche. I wanted it to feel like my own store. I didn't want it to feel like Nancy's store. Right. So that was part of the reason why we went in and gutted the whole thing. It is beautiful. We should post like some pictures and stuff. We should. Um, just to give you like a little imaginary picture of our store. It's, you walk in and it's a very like warm eggshell white. There's marble floors, white marble floors. Um, it is just like exactly how you would imagine a beautiful wedding dress shop. That's what the store looks like. Right. So we did that in January. Um, and we knew right off the bat that we wanted to add a salon in. But the nice thing was is that we were able to figure out the bridal store first before right. we added the salon on. So So when we took over the the salon wasn't in it was just the bridal store that we took over first. Yeah, it was just the bridal store. So from January to October we were just running the bridal store. Um, in June, we bought the storefront or started renting out the storefront just to the side of Preche and started gutting that to match the current store that we had so that we could add the salon in. So it took us a few months to gut that whole thing, renovate it, add the salon in. And then in October, we closed for like two days, knocked down the wall that combined the two stores and that's when we officially became Preche Bridal and Salon because we were now a full service wedding dress shop and a full service salon. And that was in October of 2017. Yep. That we were the full Preche. Mm-hmm. That's when Preche was born. That was the best day of my life. It was so exciting. We had it a huge so grand opening. Um, we had all these amazing stylists working for us. We had our consultants, we had our seamstresses, like it was just so unbelievable that we had like all these employees working for us and this beautiful store and like that my dream literally had come to life. It was right. like the coolest, most awesome day of my whole life. It was. Um, but now I kind of want to get into, so that's Preche. That's how Preche came to be. Mm-hmm. We're here. But I want to know how it was starting the salon. Like how hard was it? And to start the salon. Yeah. So appreciate the bridal store is going well. Yeah, it was going really well. And your mom's helping run it. Mm -hmm. But then we knocked on the wall and now there's a salon kind of get into the whole starting the salon part and how that the salon was definitely harder because like I want the truth behind it. Like just it was really hard. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. Um, I mean, the salon started from literally scratch, whereas the bridal store, we already had contracts with people. We had inventory when we took over. We had employees that knew what they were doing um, and that kind of trained us as we trained them. Right. So that wasn't completely from scratch. So I think we kind of our heads got a little big from how seamlessly we were able to start. Right. Appreciate bridal. Like. But with Preche Bridal, the first day we were open as pre oh that we took over the store, we sold eight dresses that day. Exactly. And yeah. It was like, like here we, we go. Ground running. It was amazing. Right. But now with Salon Preche, we were starting that from absolute scratch. Right. And finding stylists to work for us was right. so hard. I mean, I want to talk to like anyone out there that's thinking of starting a salon or has started a salon should know like understand this. Finding stylists 
was so hard. It was really hard. I remember being stressed and all the time. And it was hard time. because I, I didn't want to just let any random stylist work for me. Like, right. I wanted talented stylists that loved hair and makeup. Right. Because that's what we were. We I wanted all my stylists to specialize in hair and makeup. But then I also wanted them to be really great at cuts and colors as well. Right. Um, and I'm, I didn't have time to train all my new stylists. Does that make sense? So I needed right. stylists who were experienced, who were talented, and that we could just get going with. But it was really hard. Yeah. I remember thinking like... I messaged so many people telling them, I'm opening a salon. I'd love for you to come work for me. 80% of them never messaged me back. And the ones that did were so sweet. But I mean, it was hard. How many styles did we have when we first opened? Like four, five? No, like two. You Well, there's you. Shondi. Shondi. My girl Shondi. She had Hannah. my back from the beginning. Hannah, who was one of my best friends from hair school, who's so talented. Morgan. Morgan. Mm-hmm. She was amazing. And Carly. And Carly. So there's five of us total. So four other stylists plus me. Right. But I remember the things like I remember like thinking this is important. We got to get stylists and like asking you. And let's not forget that I was pregnant at the time. Right. So I was due to have a baby at the end of December. We ended up having him on January 4th. But we opened the salon in October and I was due two months later. Right. So I was one of the five stylists and I knew I was leaving soon. And Hannah, who was one of my best friends, who was also a stylist, was also pregnant and had the same due date as me. Right. So that was two out of the five of us were going to be done within two months. Right. And I remember, like, I just remember asking you, like, did this girl write back to you? Did this girl write back to you? And you're just like, no, no. You get, like, frustrated. Yeah. And I was like, holy cow. I remember thinking, like. How are we ever going to do yeah, this? Yeah. How are we ever going to get girls to work at our salon? Like, I understand their perspective because they're like. Why I, would you want to work yeah, at a new salon? I wouldn't want to go to appreciate, like, salon appreciate, like. No one goes there to get their hair done. Yeah, like no one knew about it yet. It was yeah. a brand new salon. And I was like, this is going to be really hard. Um, but you did. You found those first four girls. Who had my back. It was great. Yeah. And then, so, appreciate the thing. Now the salon thing. We got it running. Mm-hmm. We I got it started. running. And I um, did my best to try to come up with systems for our, for the stylists. Um, meaning like the way we would run things. I stocked the color bar. Um, I mean, honestly, it was just a hot mess. We right. were just like we just floating. Like in- invented our own commission structure. Yeah, we invented our own commission structure. We really, I mean, we were just like hanging on right. as far as the salon went. The bridal store is over here on the other side, killing it, keeping the salon afloat. Luckily, honestly, we had the bridal store to like cover right. all of our expenses for the salon for the first couple months because I don't know how salons survive. Right. I mean, our salon was doing like maybe two to three thousand in a sales month. a month. Yeah. Total. <laughs> total. <laughs> <laughs> almost covers rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Almost. That's the key word. Doesn't cover color and paying the employees and paying the employees <laughs> and all of that kind of stuff. So. Um, honestly, I don't know how salons do it when they don't have a mother company keeping them afloat, which is what we had. Right. Um, luckily we had my mom as a partner who ran the, who's been running the bridal store basically since the salon opened because I've taken over the salon. My mom runs the bridal store. And so really all, all I've had to stress about was the salon. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which has been really helpful. I do, sorry, let's rewind really fast. I do all the buying for the bridal store. So I choose all of our dresses and I design with our designers, which sounds maybe a little bit confusing. Um, But every year we go to market two to three times a year. We go every spring and every fall. And then every other year we go to Spain and we also do bridal market in Spain. So every other year we go three times, but every single year we for sure go to New York and Chicago to find wedding dresses. And while we're there, I sit down with the designers and I'll sketch a modest version of their dresses. And that's how we have them sent to us. So I think we have 10 designers right now um, and two of them don't let me redesign their dresses. That's Rosa Claire and Pronovius. They're huge brands that are two of the biggest brands in all of Europe. Right. Um, 
and we're just a little fish in a giant ocean. Um, so we don't really have control to redesign those dresses, but all of our other designers were really close to, I have a really close relationship with all of our designers, um, as well as my mom. And I get to sit down with them and help them help me redesign the dress to look like it's always been modest in a very fashionable way, right? which is my number one goal. So I'd say I'm the creative director over the bridal store and I'm the manager runner of the salon, whereas my mom's the manager and runs the bridal store, if right. that makes sense. Um, so like that. we, we knew that we needed to figure something out with the salon. I wanted the stylist to feel comfortable and confident in the job that they had and that I was here to help them and that I could help them and that I could help them grow their career and all that kind of stuff. But I just didn't know where to start. Um, and I think it was like in February of 2018, um, our salon centric rep, who's who we buy all of our color and product from, came to us and said, you guys are a new salon. I'm just throwing it out there. I think you should get a salon business coach. And we were like, we're hardly making any money in the salon right now as it is. We're not hiring a salon business coach. Like we don't right. have extra money to pay for a salon business coach. Uh, but he talked us into it. And that March, we went to Chicago and met with a business coach. It's called Summit Salons. And we met Chad. And honestly, ever since we got back that March, Chad's been working with us. He's our he's our amazing coach. Right. Um, and he helped us put systems into place. He helped me learn how to be a coach for my stylist and really helped create the salon culture that... I had been trying to create on my own. Right. Yeah. I mean, Chad came in and like I said, we had like invented our own commission structure. We thought, oh, when they do this, they can move up. But like anyone that's worked in the salon or around the salon knows like that's not how it works. That's not how you should do it. Yeah. There's so many different metrics that go into it. Totally. And some of the salon came in and put like, this is what your salon should be doing with like the people in your area. Like this is the price pricing that you should have on your menu. Right. Um, the commission structure is this, 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 and this, and in order to move up, you need to be doing this, this, and that. These are the reports you need to be pulling on each of your stylists. You need to be coaching your stylist monthly. Um, he just taught me so much. Right. And I would say that that is when, like my why behind pre shape Bridal, that sounds cheesy, up to this point had been my love for weddings and hair and makeup. Right. And I just... I mean, I was living my dream, just having the funnest time going to market and meeting with designers and designing wedding dresses and having a salon and doing grand openings. Like it was just like I was living my dream life. Right. But after I met Chad, I feel like my why behind the store went from being weddings and hair and makeup and my love for that to being my love for my employees right, and wanting to grow all of them. And that included my, my bridal consultants, my stylists, my seamstresses. I feel like I'm so lucky because the store really is like a family. Like every single girl that works for us, I'm obsessed with every single one of them and I want the very best for them. And I would say, and I would hope that all of them know that. And they know that me and Stephanie feel that way about each of them and that, we want the best for them in their life and in their career and that we're here to help them and coach them and do whatever we can for them. And I feel like because of that, our store has grown so much for sure. I mean, like our salon has grown 300% in the last two years, which is crazy. Like I literally never would have seen that coming and it didn't happen because. Yeah. Two and a half years ago we were doing. Yeah. $3,000 $3,000 a month. And this month we'll hit 30,000, mm-hmm. um, which is insane. Yeah. But that's just in the salon. Like I, that's the salon. Um, I've noticed since, like you said, you found your why and you really like, I can tell how much you love these girls and how much you really want them to succeed. But 
because of that, like uh, we were saying earlier, because you found your passion and your true why, which is helping these girls succeed. Mm -hmm. And that's what you focused on. I feel like that's like, once you focused on that, everything else started to follow. Totally. The salon started to grow. People started to want to work for us. The culture at the store changed. Right. Like, like we were like, when you started hiring people, you were literally sending Instagram messages to like 30 different girls. Praying people would message yeah, pr- back. And we was like, oh, you do hair? Like, do you want to come work for us? Like, yeah. So, but now <laughs> it we It looks get- like you're wearing eyeliner in that last post. Do you want to come <laughs> do makeup for me? <laughs> <Right>. Like, <laughs> but, I'll teach you. But now, I mean, we get two to three resumes a week. Oh, yeah. And you're not hiring anymore. Sometimes a day. Right. We get so many people wanting to work for you. And I know we wish we could hire all these employees, but you're to full capacity. And the girls that work for you love you and adore you and won't ever leave you. Right. Because of how much you care about them. And Briche has turned into like, from, from my perspective, it's turned into like this big business, being an entrepreneur, a cool thing to like, it's just kind of past all that. And it's not to like, wow, like we can help people, like give people jobs. Like it's just a true passion that I feel like you found mm-hmm. and it's, it's showing and it's really fun to watch you um, do all this. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So um, when like the second year of the store is open, they did an article on a cool entrepreneur, the coolest entrepreneurs in Utah County. Yeah, like the top, I think it was like the top 15 entrepreneurs of Utah County. And they wanted you to be on it. Yep. And I remember things like I was always the, like the business guy. Like I wanted Cody to Cody was the entrepreneur. Right. And I remember like when that happened and just being like, at that time I was like honestly devastated. Yeah. I was like, this hurts. And I felt horrible when I got the call from Utah Valley Magazine asking me to be the in the top 15 entrepreneurs I was like can my husband and my mom come with me like I didn't feel like I deserved to do this alone to be on in the magazine alone at all because I hadn't done it alone and I also knew that it wasn't my dream to be an entrepreneur my dream was just to have a wedding dress shop and a hair salon right which happened to be entrepreneurial but had I not been married to you, I never would have opened the salon. So I was like, like, can I take this offer? You right. know what I mean? I remember just being like, it's so crazy. Cause like at the time I was just like my whole life, all I wanted to do is be one of the top 10 entrepreneurs in Utah County. Yeah. <laughs> like literally like that's, that was my dream growing up. But you know, at the time it was, I was hurt. Like it wasn't hurt, but I was just I was devastated. Mm-hmm. But like, I look back on the now, I was like, that's so stupid. Like literally you are the best entrepreneur out there, but it's, it's, it's not entrepreneur. Like you're just someone that actually found their passion and followed it. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that I could be someone to help you do that. Yeah. But it's been you following your passion, doing what you want and look what it's built. Yeah. And it is you. It's not me. Yeah. I'm here. I'm nice. Mm-hmm. My mom Um, always tells people in the store, like, this is her dream. This is her thing. And I'm just the wind beneath her wings. And like, truly, Cody and my mom are just the wind beneath my wings. Like, I'm so grateful that you both have, like, let me do all this. Because like I said, I literally never would have done it if I wasn't, like, pushed into it. Right. Well, it's been fun. It has been. It's been so fun. And it's It's been exciting. the ride of a lifetime as, and it's just getting started. Yeah. Um, so kind of go over like our goals or what we want to be doing in the next, in the future, future. <laughs> so we have two years left on our, what's it called? Lease on our lease, um, in the building that we originally took over. And our goal is to buy a building or build a building that we own and grow the salon. Right now we have five chairs in the salon and we would like to have 15 to 20 in this new building that we're building. Um, We want to add on like more aesthetic stuff, like lashes, spray tans, facials, all that kind of stuff so that our brides truly can have a one-stop shop for everything they need. 
Um, and then we also want to expand the, the wedding dress side of it as well and our alterations. So pretty much double the size of the store. Right. Um, that's probably our biggest goal right now. That's really what we're reaching towards saving for and going after. That's, that's what we're doing right now. Right. It's scary. It is, but it's exciting. It's the next big step. Next big step. And I like, I feel like from the beginning, we always like, oh, we're going to go appreciate so big. And it's just, it owning a business is hard. Yeah. <laughs> and running it well, is hard. Well, first we were like, we're going to grow this so big and we're going to have a bunch of other locations and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And we had all these ideas and all these things and we're going to add a salon. And, and I feel like we've learned that like, you just truly have to take it one step at a time. So right now, like we added the salon. That's right. good. Now the salon's like, under wraps we have systems in place the bridal store has systems in place like i feel like we're feeling good now we're saving we're gonna get the building and then we'll kind of see where we go from there right 10 years from now you know we would like to have five more locations <laughs> maybe <laughs> that's i told you guys my husband's a dreamer right. there he is i'm the one over here right like there. this is so awesome but what could it be someday we'll have a magazine Preche. yeah you'll get it like It'll be bigger than the Oprah magazine. I'm the sh- I'm the stressed one of this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so one more thing I want to ask you. So in this time, you know, you said right after you started a salon, you gave birth mm-hmm. to a child. I had a baby. You had a baby. How has it been, you know, being a working mom over the past two years? It's been really hard, but amazing. Right. But it's been really hard. Um. I'm emotional because I'm about to have another baby <laughs> literally in three days. Three days. Um, but no, it's been, re- it's been an adventure and it's been a definite learning curve to try to figure out like how to balance it, how to deal with like the mom guilt of working and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I mean, me and Cody always say to each other that at the end of the day, all that matters is our relationship with each other and Stance. That's our little boy's name. Right. Like, that's really all that matters. Um, But I think it's important. And for me, it's really helpful to have something in my life that's different than that, that I get to have be my own thing and that I'm proud of and that I get to work towards and work for every single day. And I think it's awesome for Stance to grow up seeing me working towards goals and creating something that I love and working hard. Um, I think that those things teach him just as much as being home and teaching him how to read. Like both are equally important to each other. Right. Um, We've been lucky to have Cody's been able to work from home for the last a little over a year. And so the first year of Stance's life, I brought him to the store with me every single day for the first six months that he was alive. Right. Um, and it was great. I would just have my baby carrier and he was so cute. He's literally, he was the cutest <laughs> little baby and everyone loved him. He has 25 moms. That's all of our employees. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it was such a blast. Like that time was so fun. I would nurse at the store and I had stands with me all the time, but he is a boy and he is a true boy through and through crazy. So by the time he was six months, there was no bringing stance to the store anymore. It was really pushing it. Right. He's crazy. He was crawling all over the place, getting into everything, pulling jewelry off the shelves, pulling hair product off the shelves. Like it was just crazy. So he he still does that exactly thing. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> um, so that was that was really hard. Was when I realized that I couldn't bring stance with me anymore because I kind of was living in like this fairyland of like being able to be a mom and an owner of a business at the exact same time every single day. Right. Um, but then I had to start trusting people to watch him while I was at the store. Um, and, and it wasn't even a matter of trusting people because I mean, really my mom took a day, your mom took a day and my sister took a day. Right. And obviously I trust and love those people more than anyone in this world, but I felt so guilty not being with my little boy because my friends would post 
pictures of them with their little kids all day. And I just felt like, am I the worst mom ever for choosing to have a dream at the same time as being a mom? Uh Like, how do I balance that? And it was really, really hard, but, and it still is hard. It's something that I battle with and deal with every day. But I think the way that I've dealt with it is just like putting up boundaries. So like when I'm home, I try to really be home and like be with Stance and be on the ground with him and like playing with him and talking to him and doing everything I can and not working. Um, And then he goes down for a nap and then I work for the two hours that Stance is sleeping. And then, or I'll run into the store for a couple of hours and Cody's at home with Stance. Um, But I think it's just been a matter of like putting up boundaries and being a mom when I'm home and being able to work when I'm at work. Right. And you do really good at that. I mean, you have so much on your plate. I mean, having running a business while starting a business, managing 25 people, like, and then just the stresses of it all. Like the thing is like there's businesses and it's fun and everything, but it's like come down to it's like, do we have enough money for payroll? Right. We're going to pay the bills. Like that is just a stressful thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you do really good at just being there for stance and you're a great mom and you don't let that side of things take over your mom's side of things. Right. And I try do. really hard not to. And it's incredible. You're a great example to me. Thanks. Um, but I was going to say, so I kind of started saying it and then I forgot about it, but so at six months, Stan stopped coming to the store. Then for like six months, I had help watching him. Then you were able to start working from home. Right. Which helped so much with like the mom guilt thing. Right. Because at least one of his parents was with him all the time. Yeah. I have been. Cody's kind of been a stay at home dad. Yeah. I've been the stay at home dad for a year. Mm-hmm. And it's been so amazing. He's literally the best dad ever. Stan's mm-hmm. obsessed with Cody. <laughs> it's fun. It has been fun yeah it's been so fun and it's been awesome because then cody gets to help with pre and he gets to do his he's doing his own stuff he's doing this podcast he started a hedge fund like he has his own journey that he's on right which i think is really awesome and helpful for our relationship too that cody's on his own journey and i'm on my own journey but we also are doing it together right which has been super helpful it has it's been pretty great and the biggest thing is like you know, a lot of times we've said, you know, this is really hard. Why are we doing it now? It's how are we going to do this? Right. I feel like, I mean, what motivates us or what we really want is to be able to create a life for ourselves. So like when pre you know, in even just five, 10 years, if we c- it can run itself yeah. and then we can be home with our kids at all times yeah, and spend the time, you yeah. know, we're doing it now so that we can, Right. I mean, we're still only 24 and 23 mm-hmm. and seven years from now, you'll be 30. But in seven years, the store could, could put you in a place where it's like. Yeah, I go in a few times a week just to make sure it's doing good. Right. But we have a manager that's running like the trenches, right. you know. So it's worth it. Not the trenches. That sounds <laughs> so horrible. <laughs> no, it's literally the funnest. Whoever that manager is, is a lucky person. Right. But it's worth it. It's worth the hard work, the stress and the heartache because one day. It'll. Yeah. It will all be worth it. Totally. But it's been, babe, it's been so fun interviewing you. Has it? Yeah. Thanks. We should do it again. We should do it again I sometime. will. I've got to follow your quest. So whether it's in six months or a year, I will get you back on again and see how Salon's doing, the progress towards getting another building, and kind of your thoughts on it now. And you'll have another child, so how the double, oh, yeah. double mom life will be. Mm-hmm. Double mom life. Okay. Well... Thanks, babe. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you all for listening to us chat with each other. I hope this wasn't too long. Right. It was was almost an hour. Wow. Wow. But I hope you guys enjoy. Tiff is my wife and I love her. And this is her quest. But if you have your own quest or you're someone else that's in the same situation, I want to know all the stories. I want to use my podcast as a platform for other business owners. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone has the time to start a podcast or to get their story out there or they don't know how. Use me. I want to help you. So if you're interested, send me a DM. Yep. Reach out. Find me. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks for having us. Can I play the jingle one last time at the end? Yeah.
Yeah. We're both just headbanging here to the song. <laughs> okay, well, this is Quest Rodeau. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>